Members, today we have um, in front of us House File 561, uh, Representative Ordahl's bill. Uh, Rep Ordahl, would you like to move uh, your bill? I believe it's going to Education Committee. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, you know, I will move the bill. I'm not sure where it, it's going. Um, but I move the bill and send it wherever it needs to go. It's go excuse me, it's going to Education Finance. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. You know, my question is, there's no money in this bill. Um, but whatever. Laura, do we know why it's going to education finance if there's no money attached to it? I can look into it. Otherwise, if there's a question, we can certainly just lay it over as well. Okay, we can talk about that later. I'll, I will present the bill then. Okay. So Professor Otto okay. moved his bill uh, to be laid over possibly or it's going to education finance committee. We'll figure that out. Professor Otto, to your bill. All right, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And uh, I will just say that I think last time it was laid over for possible inclusion when we passed this uh, two years ago. Uh, House File 561 expands the mentoring provisions currently in statute. It requires the adoption of a mentoring program for new teachers and makes staff development money an eligible source of funding. Uh, we lose 40% of our new, new teachers in the first five years. I believe that more support in those first years would help re retain and lead better teachers. We've already recognized the need for mentoring in our Teachers of Color Bill. Teacher mentoring programs are now perceived as an effective staff development approach for beginning teachers. By establishing teacher mentors, mentoring programs, school districts serve two purposes. Novice teachers are given a strong start at the beginning of their careers and experienced classroom teachers serving as mentors receive recognition and incentives, including the satisfaction of helping a new teacher become better. This bill directs the Commission of Education to collaborate and help in the implementation of mentorship programs, but there remains discretion and flexibility for the local school districts. In past renditions of this bill, I was more prescriptive, but questions arose about what the mentor mentorship plan should look like. What good plans are school districts currently using that could be adapted? Thus, with agreement from education stakeholders, Education Minnesota, the School Board Association, uh, the Association of School Administrators, Minnesota Elementary School Principal Association, and the Minnesota Association of Secondary School Principals, uh, they will collaborate with the Department of Education to formulate a model mentoring plan that our school districts will have the option to choose if they wish. There are many personal examples of the success of mentorship programs. Let me quote one teacher. Today, my success as a teacher, not to mention the lives of all the students I hope I've inspired, is directly related to the caring, high quality mentorship I received during my first year of teaching. Without it, I would have, I would have become another statistic quitting after my first few years on the job. Okay, this is an important piece of legislation. All we're trying to do is develop a consistent model for mentoring new teachers across the state of Minnesota that school districts can use if they choose to do so. And it makes uh, staff development funding available if they choose to use it. So I urge your support for the bill. Thank you. My understanding, uh, you don't have any testifiers. Is that um, correct? I don't have any testifiers. I know that Ed Allies at our last meeting uh, did have someone that wanted to testify if they're available. Um, I, I guess uh, that's an option, but I don't have anyone scheduled. Okay, we'll move to public testimony. Um, I believe Matt Schaefer is from Ed Allies <clears throat> is testifying. Yep. Good morning, or good afternoon, everybody. Um, Chair Hassan, members of the committee, good afternoon. Um, my name is Matt Shaver, Policy Director at Ed Allies, and I'm here to testify in support of HF 561. Thank you to Representative Erdahl for your leadership on this important issue. <clears throat> Mentorship programs sound like really good ideas in a policymaking space, but they're actually incredibly difficult to do well in practice. They're a worthy endeavor, but require a clear vision, thoughtful standards, and investment to get right. Ed Allies has been a strong advocate of high-quality mentorship, 
but has had concerns that licensure policy required teachers to complete district mentorship programs, but didn't require districts to provide mentorship. HF 561 is a remedy for these challenges. When I started my teaching career, I wanted to be the kind of teacher my students deserved from day one and not someone who was making mistakes at the expense of kids. So after undergrad in Minnesota, I moved to Boston to join an associate teaching mentorship program. Danielle Blair, a Spelman grad and future principal was my mentor and she raised me as an educator. She taught me how to run a classroom, what high expectations for students looked and felt like and deepened my understanding of content unlike anything I experienced in student teaching. Ms. Blair is an incredible per person and educator and still it was the program that provided the structure for her and the other mentor teachers to operate in that made it so successful in developing teachers. Associate teachers had their own professional development and so did mentors. We did film study of our toughest parts of the day so we could get the feedback we needed to grow for our students. And a great teacher does not automatically make a great mentor. They need development and support as well. So mentors watched each other's associate teachers and developed feedback aligned to a rubric of what our school determined strong teaching looked like. We had a culture around observation and feedback that was about growth rather than gotchas. With purposeful planning at the state level like HF 561 requires, we can do that in Minnesota too. I'm gonna to highlight some specific areas in HF 561 that Ed Allies supports. Line 2.10, that would require school districts to develop mentor programs. This is a small but mighty shift that would provide a solution to the current conflict between statute and rule. In 2017, the Professional Educator and Licensing Standards Board passed a rule that requires all teachers participate in the employing district or charter school's mentorship program in order to maintain their licensure. However, neither statute nor rule requires a district or charter school to have a mentorship program. State law only encourages schools to have them. With teachers currently required to participate in mentorship and schools only encouraged to provide it, many teachers can find themselves unable to renew their licenses through no fault of their own. HF 561 fixes that. Lines 3.8 through 3.15 that would require the collaboration of multiple stakeholder groups to develop a model and best practices for mentoring. At their best, teacher mentorship programs have been proven to increase teacher retention and job satisfaction and can also lead to better instructional practices that result in increased student achievement. At their worst, they're an exercise in box checking. HF 561 requires Minnesotans to come together to make sure we do mentorship well. High quality mentoring programs can be a difference maker in teacher development and in the academic success of students. This bill would elevate the practice of mentorship by requiring all districts and charters to provide mentorship, serve as a technical fix to our licensure policies, preventing any teachers from falling through the cracks, and develop a clearer picture of what these programs can look like. Ed Allies believes HF 561 is a step firmly in the right direction. I want to thank Representative Erdahl. I want to thank members of the committee for hearing it. Um, and thank you all for your public service. Thank you very much for your testimony. Um, do we have member questions? Uh, Professor Erickson, I see that you have your hand up. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, uh, Mr. Shaver. Uh, if you would be willing to answer a question. Sure. Thank you, thank you for testifying. Do you know how many of our QCOMP schools have uh, an, an organized mentorship program? Chair Hassan and Representative Erickson, thank you so much for the question. I don't have that information on me, I, I apologize. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, thank you. You have Mr. a follow-up? Yeah, and I didn't mean to stop the, the testifier, uh, but I think, you know, that QCOMP is the perfect uh, vehicle for mentorship programs in our districts. But do you have uh, a uh, copy or uh, a document that you can share with us that illustrates the program that you studied under and used in Boston? I mean, I would be so curious to see what that includes because I was a mentor uh, during most of my teaching career uh, uh, with beginning teachers, you know, and besides working on um, discipline issues and how to handle a classroom, time management, and then of course, getting right down to the nitty gritty of, you know, how to present lessons. And, you know, it can be just overwhelming sometimes for a new teacher who maybe uh, has a new assignment different from student teaching and they need to be almost re-educated in that new level. So, you know, if you have that document, I'd love you to share it with us uh, because, uh, and with the department as well, uh, because it's good for them to see what is happening out there that's really quality. Uh, thank you for your testimony. Mr. Shaver, do you have a comment? Sure, um, Chair Hassan and Representative Erickson, thank you so much for your question and, and your comments. Yes, I can absolutely share um, what that program looked like. And definitely agree that um, while undergrad serves as a, as a nice foundation, um, it is incredibly helpful 
to have somebody who whose job it is to ensure that you are developing um, as a teacher once you're once you're firmly in the classroom. So I'll be happy to share that with the committee and with MDE. Thank you, Mr. Shaver. Any other questions? I don't see hands. Oh, that's um, a <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have a question for the author. Um, I'm wondering, could you tell me your thoughts on the value of requiring mentorship rather than just offering it for those that are interested? For example, I was offered a mentor as I came into this job and I was happy to have a mentor. Um, but what is it about the, the requirement that's important to you? Thank you. Rep. Otto. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and, and Representative. Uh, well, first of all, the fact that we are losing 40% of our teachers in the first five years, in their first five years. Uh, this means that they are not getting the support that they need. At least that's one of the components. They're not getting the support that they need to succeed in the classroom. And by, by making it... Uh, required that they have that they take the, that the school offers a mentorship course uh, instead of encouraging uh, as mr. Shaver pointed out there are areas where where we are requiring that teachers have a mentorship program but that doesn't always correspond with a school district having the program for them to take so what we're tr trying to do, again to do is to develop a consistent model that is brought forth by these education stakeholder groups that can be used by school districts across the state of Minnesota if they choose to do so. If they've got a better program, that's fine. But in terms of, uh, uh, of requiring it, I think that that is important in terms of making it uh, consistent and also uh, important to make sure that our, that our new teachers do have that support that I think is greatly needed and missing in a lot of our school districts. Thank, Thank you. you. Do you have a follow-up? I do. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so one of my concerns, and, and first of all, both my parents are teachers and education is a passion of mine from a personal space with my own children. So I'm just trying to get a better understanding as I've been speaking with a lot of teachers in my district um, and a lot of voters about this. Um, but for example, conversations with uh, my teachers, there comes up a lot, um, there's a lack of prep time. They go from class to class to class to class. Their class sizes are huge, you know, 25, 30 students. It's hard for them to, to take an extra moment out of their day to do anything other than plan for their next class and prepare their next lesson. What were your thoughts around the time requirement on this? Are they required to meet with their mentor? I mean, our teachers don't have enough hours in the day as it is. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering uh, what your thoughts are on that piece of it. Thank you. Rep. Otto. Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, Representative Berg. Several things. First of all, um, this is, again, for new teachers. Uh, no, veteran teachers don't have to have the, the mentorship program. I'm talking about those, those teachers in those first three years who are probationary teachers for the most part. Um, and this is not, I'm not looking that veteran teachers be assigned to do this. Uh, it's their choice. If they believe that they have the time, that they can spare the prep time or whatever time this comes out of, then if they're willing to do it, they can do it. Uh, and in terms of, uh, of the, the timing of this, uh, part of what I'm talking about will be developed by the committee that's going to make the recommendation. So, I mean, I, I honestly don't see this as a, I, I was, Representative Berg, I was in the classroom for 35 years. Um, there is time to help out new teachers if you choose to do so. Thank you. Any other questions? I don't see any hands up. So, Rep. Ardo, I'm told that um, 
education finance wants want to hear this bill. Uh, so with that, we're going to renew your motion to re refer House File 561 to the Committee on Education Finance. Ms. Allen, would you take the ball? Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. It's always nice to have my bill wanted by another committee. <laughs> That's a good sign, I, I would say. Chair Richardson, excused. Vice Chair Hassan? Aye. Representative Erickson? Aye. Representative Dreskowski? No. Representative Bennett? Aye. Representative Berg? Aye. Representative Bo? Aye. Representative Christensen? Aye. Representative Edelson? Aye. Representative Feist? Aye. Representative Frazier? Aye. Representative Jordan? Aye. Representative Keeler? Aye. Representative Moeller? Aye. Representative Mueller? Aye. Representative Poston? Aye. Representative Scott? Aye. Representative Erdahl? Aye. Representative Wozlowick? Representative Wozlowick? Madam Chair, there are 16 ayes and one nay. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Representative Ardal, you are on your way to Ed Finance. Thank you. Thank you.